Hey guys, thanks again for joining me for another Base Hospitality Group training video. Tonight we are going to be continuing our series for front desk associate training. I hope you enjoy the content that we're going to cover. Tonight we're going to look at the front desk being problem solvers and thinkers. Yesterday I posted a video for you guys that focused on the four key functions of a front desk associate. And today we're gonna to take a deep dive into the first of those. Uh, even though service was the first one we mentioned, we decided to come out with one for problem solving and thinking first. So uh, we're gonna go through today basically a bunch of examples of ways that we want you guys and expect you guys to think on your feet on the job to make everyone's life easier. Before we do that, I'm gonna hit a couple of highlights. First, on the service note, it's, it's something that our managers has, have asked me to emphasize, and that's near and dear to my heart, so I really appreciate them saying this. Th that, um, that item is that every single guest matters immensely when they walk in our door or they call on the phone. And it is paramount to our success that you all at the front desk treat each person when they walk in the door as though they're the only person in your world for that moment. We don't know what their situation was on their trip to us. They may have been delayed in four airports. They may have had a flat tire on their drive in. Their car may have blown up. I remember one guy in our Wisconsin hotel had hit a deer and couldn't get the insurance company to send someone out to pick up the car and he was basically on foot. Um, so we don't always know where these guys are coming from and when someone walks in the door and they don't seem quite as cheerful and chipper as we are when we go, hi, welcome to the hotel need, it might be because they've had a really bad day. And if we can listen to them, understand them, empathize with them, and then provide them some extraordinary service, there's a really good chance that we can help improve the trajectory of their day from that point forward. And it's an honor to do that. So it's really, really important that you guys take as much time as needed to make each individual guest feel valued and let them know that we truly do care. Second, masks so right now this has come up a few times in my head and I've not mentioned it in a video but as you can see when I have my mask on most of my expression is gone all you can see is my eyes and as long as this masking requirement remains in place from local health departments and the like it's really important that we use the voice inflection that I talked about a couple videos ago and got into with the phone call for the front desk. Essentially, when people come in in person now, it's really similar to the way they are on the desk, only now they can see us. But if our voice isn't sending a good message, it could create even more awkward situations than occur on the phone. So, while we're wearing masks, however long this goes on, it's really important that your eyes are happy eyes and that your voice is a happy voice. They can't see you smiling at them. I'm smiling at you right now. And if you can't see it in my eyes, you can't see it at all. So, when we're wearing these things, it's really important that when people come in, let your voice do some gymnastics that maybe you wouldn't normally do. Hi, how are you? It's great to see you. What can I do for you today? It's really hard to not know that person's happy whether or not they're doing this or they're doing this, okay? So be mindful of your surroundings. So that is the great segue into today's stuff and that is how to be a great thinker and a great problem solver. All right, so get rid of that thing. Whew. We're gonna talk a little bit about thinking ahead and assigning rooms and how important 
assigning rooms is to the overall experience of a guest stay. Sometimes it's not considered all that important and we allow our computers to do it automatically in most properties. And I think sometimes we tend to forget just how important it is assigning a guest to the best room possible when they're staying with us. And the reason for that is it's really, really easy for us when it gets slow to just let the computer do all the work. We stick the guests wherever uh, they may uh, end up and random chance assigns them into the worst room in the hotel and we just shrug our shoulders. And meanwhile, we have 60 rooms sitting over here beautifully looking out upon the best view in town. And we didn't think that, oh, being next to the elevator that goes up and down all night uh, with a drafty window was a bad thing. So we're gonna talk a little bit about thinking ahead, assigning rooms, and how important this is to the overall guest experience. So assigning rooms during renovations or slow times. Okay, so all of our hotels are going to go through a renovation at some point. Everybody's gonna experience this, whether you're experiencing it now or you're gonna experience it this year or next year, pretty soon your hotel is gonna get renovated and you are gonna be in this situation. Now, what's that situation? Well, as a renovation occurs, some of your rooms are unrenovated, so they're old. Some are under construction, so they're nasty. And some are brand new, and so everybody wants them. It's your job to prioritize who gets what room, where, and when, and which rooms don't get rented at all. So obviously we try to put rooms that are being renovated completely out of service so they can't be accidentally rented. However, what often happens is we'll have 60% of our hotel done, 10% being renovated and 30% unrenovated, and we'll have 20% occupancy and we'll have people staying in unrenovated rooms. That should never happen. If we have more rooms renovated than we have guests in house, we should have 100% of our guests staying in renovated rooms. Let me say that again. If we have 40 renovated rooms and we only have 20 guests in house, all 20 guests should be in renovated rooms. It's that simple. So it's your job, either in night audit when the rooms are being assigned, first shift when you're looking at the day's arrivals or making keys, or second shifts as you look at arrivals before the guest comes in to make sure that if there was a room assignment error, you correct it before that guest walks in. You can always catch it and correct it in the check-in process. You can always fix it at check-in. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry, I was just about to give you some keys. That's one of our older rooms. I'm gonna put you in a brand new room. They just got finished, just give me two seconds. You can always fix it, but it's always best if you fix it before the guest walks in the door. So use your reports. We, we have all of those reports printed for a very specific reason. That reason, is that we want you guys to look at them and think about who's coming in and where are they staying. So right now we're talking specifically about thinking about room assignments. It's really important that we do that. Let's put as many guests as possible into newly renovated rooms. What we do by doing that is obviously we give the guests the best experience possible. Additionally though, we free up our unrenovated rooms for our construction crew. You guys don't always know when they're gonna show up and when they're gonna wanna get into those old rooms and start working. So if their plan is to be at your hotel one week and they show up and five of the rooms they were gonna work in are taken by guests that didn't need to be in there, it slows down their process and it puts our whole plan for that year's room renovations into a bind. So it's really important. You guys think ahead, put the guests in the best rooms we have so that our construction guys can get in and take care of the worst rooms we have. All right, so it also goes for uh, our rooms in our bigger hotels. Maybe we have a maintenance issue in a room or you know that a room tends to run a little bit hot or a little bit cold in the winter. If we don't need to put a guest in that room, put them in one of the other rooms. 
If we have the room resources, always, always, always put our guests in the best rooms we have available. That doesn't mean you always have to upgrade them. You can put them in the best room of the room type they paid for and requested, but please put them in the best room we have available for them. It's okay to upgrade them. You don't always have to, but please put them in the best room. If we have a double queen room that's renovated and a double queen room that's not renovated, pick the renovated room 100% of the time for our guests, even if they're in there at a low rate. It's okay. It's okay. We'll be okay. We want them to have a great experience and we want them to come back. Additionally, if you have a group coming in that is uh, maybe a big contract, maybe they come in, they stay for two or three months, and their first couple of guys come in and they're trying out our hotel, please, please, please make sure that you look to see where are these guys going and get them into our best rooms. Give them the best views, especially if the other rooms are just gonna be empty. Please don't put them in old rooms if you have new rooms available. This is where we want you guys to be great thinkers. Think about what is best for the guest and what is best for the hotel. And if those two things align, you can make that decision every single time. All right, here we go. So next point, and I apologize for the last one. I was a little bit scowly, uh, having some video issues. I recorded this entire session once in its entirety and the thing deleted. So uh, I'm ready to go. Here we go. So again, thinking ahead, making key cards before guests arrive. Night audit, it's on your checklist. You guys should be making key cards in the middle of the night. Do it then, it's the best time to do it. First shift, if you guys take a phone call for a day of reservation, make that key card and those reg, or make those keys in that reg card immediately. Second shift, if you get there, all the key card, keys and reg cards should be made for you. For you guys, any call you take for a guest coming in that night, makes a reservation, make the keys and the reg card right away so that you're not trying to do it when they get in line to check in. We're always gonna have walk-ins. We don't wanna increase the time it takes to make keys and reg cards for guests that have already made a reservation. We should make those in advance every single time. So think ahead. All right. So that leads me into the first impressions for the hotel. First impressions, when they, go, they walk up, the front doors, the entry, is it clean, is it vacuumed, is it mopped, is it shoveled, is there salt? Is there too much salt? These are things that you guys at the desk, we want you to think about. You're our decision makers, you are our thinkers, you are the ones that we want to put yourself in the guest position. This is hard for you guys that are hotel operators. It's challenging, I know. But think like a guest while you're working at the desk. When a guest comes in, they should be experiencing everything in its best possible state. It doesn't mean everything's brand new. That's not the world we live in. But it can be clean, it can be mopped, it can be vacuumed, it can be shoveled. So you guys at the desk have to be thinking, and now that it's a slower season is the time to develop these skills. So when it gets busy, it's already first, it's, it's already your common nature, your first nature, whatever. So think ahead, think like a guest, and take care of garbages in the entryways, shovel the entryways. Every so often, especially during slower times, take a quick walk. If you need to have someone watch the desk for you, hey, manager, can you watch the desk for me? I'm gonna head out, go check some things out. So, very, very important, think like a guest. Make sure they're having a good first impression. All right, another thing. Thinking ahead, call-offs and missing shifts. So if you are at the desk and you look at the schedule and you see there are six housekeepers scheduled the next day 
and you know you've only got five rooms in house, it's at that moment that you should think, not, hmm, so slow, better catch up on YouTube. Unless you're watching these incredibly inspiring videos, that's not what we want you to think. What we're asking you to think instead is, hmm, way too many housekeepers, not enough rooms, I better call someone off. So text the supervisor and the employees that you're calling off so that everybody's in the loop and just say, hey, we're only gonna need two of you guys tomorrow. Deanna, Joni, John, and Paul, you guys are getting called off, sleep in. And then the supervisor's copied on the text so that they know, and everyone loves group text messages anyway, so everyone will be happy and excited. But think ahead, plan ahead. If it's breakfast and there's only one or two people, maybe you don't need a breakfast person. You can handle it at the desk. Call them off in advance. Give our employees enough advance warning if they're gonna be called off that you're not calling them while they're driving in. That's not fair to anyone. It's also not fair to anyone to ask housekeepers to drive in 15 minutes to clean one or two rooms. So think ahead, plan in advance, make a phone call uh, or send a text and take care of that by being a good thinker. Additionally, when maintenance isn't on, sometimes our maintenance guys do want time off. I know it's crazy, but sometimes they do. You guys are able to handle it. You are. You know all the stuff that needs to happen. The maintenance guys are maintenance guys because they have a unique skill set to repair things. But a lot of what they have to do is just maintain things. Make sure water levels in the pool are high enough by turning a valve and letting water in and turning a valve to close it off when it's full. It's kind of like running a bathtub, just bigger with a bigger valve. You guys can do it. We don't need to call them for everything. So if they're off on vacation, or they're off with COVID, or they're off for a weekend, whatever the case may be, if they're not there, we need you guys at the desk to think about what would the maintenance guy be doing if you were here today? I'm gonna go check the pool. I'm gonna go check the entry sidewalks to make sure they're shoveled and salted. All of those things you guys can handle. Now, it's good to develop triggers in your mind for these types of things. If your maintenance guy is off and you take a reservation and someone asks, is your pool open? Use that as a trigger to go, oh, I gotta run down to the pool and make sure the water levels are high enough, or I'm gonna go check the chemicals. All of those things are very, very simple but they need to be done consistently. If we don't do them, there's potential to cause great damage to the equipment that we have in the building. Replacing a pool pump because the water level got too low can run up to $12,000, very expensive stuff. So it's really important that you guys are thinking about all of your surroundings. You're part of a team and you guys again are the motherboard the hub of communication for that team. That means that you've got to think about how all of the things that are happening in the building affect everyone else. Our managers do that, but if the managers aren't there, and that's how we want it sometimes because they too need days off. If a manager is not there, you guys are the MOD. So we're going to come back around to that at the end. Consider a guest situation when you assign rooms as well. We talked a little bit about assigning rooms a couple minutes ago, but I'm gonna hit this again. If a guest is with a wedding, ask them if they wanna be in a room near the wedding. It's just a, con a kind of a courtesy. Some of them might want to and some of them might not. I've had both. Made a lot of reservations for weddings this summer. Half of them are like, yeah, put me right with the wedding. That way we can have fun and I can walk up to the room. And the other half are like, get me as far away from those folks as you can. Okay, in either situation, we can accommodate because we thought to ask the question. If we don't think, we don't ask good questions. And if we don't ask good questions, we don't get good answers that allow us to provide a great service to our guests. So be good thinkers, ask great questions, provide good service. All right, so we've talked about keys, we've talked about arrivals, we've talked about call-offs and maintenance and we talked about first impressions. I'm gonna talk about a few things that are more, uh, a little bit along the lines of our ethos, the spirit of how we like to operate. We operate in a really unique way. We truly and legitimately 
trust you guys with authority and responsibility to make every decision that would arise for you while you are the MOD, that is the person running the desk. You don't need a title to be the final decision maker on the property in a, for that moment. You guys can make the decision. And here's the good news. We're never going to beat you up. We're never going to yell at you. We're never going to scold you. And you're never going to be in trouble for making a bad decision. Unless you make the same bad decision over and over and over, even though we've talked about it several times. That's the only time it'll ever happen. We are going to trust you and let you make decisions. We're going to ask you to make decisions. Part of the reason is we believe that you guys are capable. And if you show that you're great thinkers, it's going to give you the opportunity to grow. Second, our whole model is based on hiring the best kind of people. People that we want to do life with. People that we consider like family. And so we don't just hire anyone. If you were uh, employed with one of the hotels that we purchased and you're still employed with us, it means that we really think you're good at this. If we don't think you're good at this, we'll tell you and then we'll help you find another position elsewhere. But if you're still here, you're good at what you do and we believe in you. We're not the type of people that are going to sneak around and talk about you behind your back. We're going to come and tell you if we don't think you're doing well. So if we're not telling you that, you're probably doing well. It's human nature to forget the positive things that have been said to us more quickly than the negative things. We try to be consistently positive and affirming and encouraging when you're doing a good job. But if there's a little gap and you've forgotten the last good thing we said, if we haven't said anything negative, don't forget that you're still in positive good standing. So with trust, we also ask you to take responsibility and authority to make good decisions. We want you guys to make decisions. The exchange is that we will talk about your decisions after the fact with you and evaluate whether they were the best for that situation. It will not be in a negative stress environment that these conversations take place. It'll be in an educational environment because we believe that we're always learning and we live that way. So when you make a decision, you don't have to be afraid that you're going to get fired for it. The worst that can happen is one of us will sit down with you and say, Hey, okay, so you did this and did you think about this or what about this or what was going on over here? And maybe through the conversation you go, Oh, you know what? I'm going to do something a little bit different next time. Great. Great. Then we're all learning. We're all improving. We're all growing together. That's the idea. Nobody expects you to be perfect and no one expects you to make perfect decisions every single time. We don't. Why would we ever expect the same of you? So another one of the reasons that we want you guys making decisions is that we don't want you pulling managers into every decision that needs to be made with a guest. Part of the reason is that their duties and responsibilities are completely different than dealing with and addressing problems that arise from guests. Managers' responsibilities and duties are a completely different set of responsibilities than yours. So if you're constantly pulling them into your responsibilities, they're doing your job for you, which means they're not able to do their job themselves. So managers, another reason that it's so important to us that managers aren't being pulled into your stuff is that these guys are where the buck stops for employee call offs, shifts that need filled. If we don't have a housekeeper or a laundry person, our managers doing it. If a night auditor doesn't show up and they can't find anyone else to fill it, our managers doing it. Because of that, that sacrifice, we want you guys to honor their time when you are there. Honor their time with their families, honor their time off when you are there, and make the decisions that you know you can make. You're not going to get beat up for making decisions. You're not going to get scolded for making decisions. So please, let our managers have their time alone when they're not working and they're not being called in. 
So we're gonna hit a little bit on communicating with guests about our plans and the type of company we are. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna close with one more little wrap about the philosophy we have about decision making. So what are you guys communicating to the guests about the type of company we are, the kind of hotels that we run and our plans for the future? This is paramount. While we don't necessarily ever wanna hear you guys sharing with guests about the negative side of your job, even though we know that it's a reality, we do want to hear you guys talking about the good sides of your job and about the good sides of this company and the good plans that we have for the future. If you're mad with a colleague or manager or one of us, we don't want the guest ever to hear that. And we'll have a zero tolerance policy on that. Simply because if we do have problems, we're correcting those problems and we don't want a guest's single experience with us to be having someone air our dirty laundry with them while we're already in process to correct it. It's not fair to that guest. I, I have had many, many guests throughout the years um, travel to other properties and, and tell me about the experience they had where a staff member was telling them about how bad the manager is or how bad the owners are, how they don't do this or they don't do that, or my colleague didn't show up this morning so I'm having a terrible day. That type of stuff we will not tolerate being shared with guests. Just don't do it, please. We do, however, want to talk about the good side of what we do in this company. If you feel like you're working with us and it's not a good experience, tell us, please. We want the opportunity to correct it. We think we can create the best work environment around in our industry. And so if you think there's something we're not doing that we should be, let us know, and if there's something we can do, we absolutely will do it. If you do enjoy what you're doing and you do believe in this company, we want you to share that with the guests. Guests talk about it, they mention it, make a nice comment about the hotel. Tell them about the great organization that we're a part of. Tell them about the great plans that we have for the future. And we do, we've got extensive plans for every single property. And if you don't know those plans, please ask. There's nothing we won't share with you guys. We'll put it all out there, probably more than you want to know. We love talking about it, and we love hearing you talk about it. Our manager, Joe, in Wisconsin, he's outstanding at this. I regularly overhear him when he doesn't know I'm listening, talking about this company that he believes in, that he calls we, because he knows he's part of this family, and he talks about us and we and how we're doing these things, and. Just nothing makes me more happy and excited than hearing you guys talk favorably about your work environment and your future, because it's a good one. Tell them about the plans that we have for rooms. If someone stays in one of our unfinished rooms, tell them about something great that's coming down the road or how you wished you could have gotten them into one of the new rooms, but we just didn't have any available. And next time they come, you'll make sure it's done and they're in one of the new rooms. Show them pictures of the new rooms and tell them how we're making investments in our properties. All of these things go a long, long way to create an environment for a guest that they're gonna wanna come back and revisit year after year. Our last point that I'm gonna make and then I'll shut it down for the night is our philosophy about mistakes because they're going to happen. Please understand that we have an environment where we know mistakes are gonna happen. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. If I'm the first one to tell you that, I'm sorry someone should have told you sooner, but that's the reality. We don't live in an environment that requires perfection. We're also not gonna tell you that we trust you to make decisions and then micromanage and beat you up after every decision you make. We might have a conversation and together discuss if there was another better alternative to the decision you made, another solution, but it won't be in a negative stress environment where you're feeling beat up. We believe that the best design for each of us is to constantly learn, to constantly grow, to develop over the course of our lives. We're not gonna attain perfection, but we can continue to get better while still making mistakes and have an enjoyable, healthy environment to make decisions, 
make good decisions and make some bad ones and yet never feel like we're in jeopardy of losing our job because I made one bad decision. Listen, if you're willing to change and learn and grow after making a bad decision, you have nothing to fear about losing a job. The only people who have anything to fear about losing a job in this organization are those who knowingly make the same bad decision over and over again, even after they've been talked to on several occasions and absolutely refuse to change. Those are the only folks who won't make it with us. If you're willing to stop making a bad decision that you know is a bad decision and change and make new decisions going forward, well, you have nothing to fear. You'll be here forever and retire happily when you turn however old it's going to be by the time you get there. We want you to make decisions in an environment where there's no fear. We think that's the way you'll make the best decisions. We're happy to talk to you about all of your decisions that you make before or after. We know that in the next few weeks you're going to want to bounce some ideas off of us or situations you've had arise that you didn't know what decision to make. That's fine. That's great. I'm going to be coming through all of the properties in the next couple of weeks. So write those questions down and ask me when I see you. But start making decisions. Start making decisions on things that you've previously asked someone else. And don't be afraid. Managers, watch for another video tonight to drop that's coming for you guys. That video is going to be about creating an environment where people are not afraid to make decisions without fear, where they're able to make decisions without fear of repercussion. It could be that inadvertently you're contributing to an environment where people don't want to make decisions and you don't know it. So tonight, hopefully by midnight, that video will drop. It takes a little time to get it uploaded and processed, but two videos coming out today, this one and then one more for you guys that are managers to watch and hopefully can learn and benefit from. We'll see you guys all in the next couple of weeks. I'm really looking forward to spending some time together. Write down your questions now so our time together is efficient and effective. And I look forward to uh, getting to know each of you a little bit better as the weeks come by.